Alrighty, welcome everyone to Wildlife Sydney Zoo at Darling Harbour. I'm Keeper Renee and I'm joined by Keeper Beck and Keeper Mel over there. And it is business as usual for us keepers, but also our animals. So that does indeed mean that these little creatures in here are going to be getting their favourite treats and of course some very nice scratches as well. So I will turn around the camera and you will meet the stars of the show. So down here we do have Ringo. So he is our resident common wombat he's very patiently waiting for his very special treats so keep it back we'll pop down some food for him but while she is doing that i'll also go up to these girls up here so these are our yellow footed rock wallabies they are also getting their morning tea so we'll come back down to ringo and back to you want to tell us a little bit about ringo down here yeah sure so ringo here he is a common wombat um, now there's three types of wombat in Australia. Uh, basically we have the common wombat, which is what Ringo is, or he's also called the bare-nosed wombat. And we also have the northern hairy-nosed wombat and the southern hairy-nosed wombat. Uh, now basically they're just found in different parts of Australia. And the hairy nose and the bare nose, um, as the name suggests, has a little bit of a different nose. Um, now Ringo here, he is actually a rescue, so he's an orphan from the wild. Um, now what his story is, is unfortunately his mum got hit and killed by a car. Um, now this is really, really common here in Australia, it's actually really awful. Um, but his mum got hit by a car, but luckily somebody did pull over to, that, to the side of the road. Um, and they checked that mum's pouch, and I will talk about the pouch in just a moment. Uh, but they found little Ringo there. Um, they were able to rescue him. Um, so that was around seven years ago, and that's about how old he is now. Um, and while well, we'll talk about that pouch that I just mentioned. Um, so basically, our wombats, our koalas, our Tasmanian devils, our kangaroos, they are all marsupials. Uh, here in Australia we have lots and lots of marsupials, we're really really lucky to have um, the most in the world. Um, and what a marsupial is, is that it's a female and they have a pouch. Um, and the young grow up and develop in that pouch. Um, so a wombat um, or a female marsupial, all female marsupials have a really short pregnancy. Um, for a wombat it's around 35 to 40 days, so very very quick and very lucky. Uh, and she gives birth to a tiny underdeveloped joey. Um, a joey is a baby marsupial, so it could be any type of marsupial, but it's always gonna be uh, called a joey when it is a baby. Um, now she gives birth to a very underdeveloped joey. It's around the size of a jelly bean. It's not very cute at all either. Um, it doesn't have any hair, no eyes, no ears, nothing like that. Um, it's basically a fetus, what she's giving birth to. Um, so kind of when it when she gives birth to it, it kind of looks like a pink squished up jelly bean So not very cute at all um, It has two little arms and a mouth and that is pretty much it now Somehow when that little joey is born it knows that it needs to make its way up into that female mum's um, pouch um, Which it does so with those two little arms that it's born with and then it will attach itself to one of the mum's teats uh, where it will stay and um, that's where it develops. Um, so only after around five or so months is when it starts to look like a cute little mini marsupial. It has most of its features there. Now Ringo here, um, our wombats, they are actually really really closely related to our koalas. Um, so kind of like kangaroos and wallabies are very similar, um, wombats and koalas are very similar as well. So they're kind of like cousins. Um, now we'll talk about their main similarities, um, so one being their big nose that they have. They both have an incredible sense of smell. Um, you can see on Ringo's eyes here that his eyes are very small, quite beady. Um, both wombats and koalas don't have the best vision. Um, because our wombats, they are nocturnal animals, so they don't really need to see that very, um, well out in the daytime and our koalas sleep for around 20 hours a day, so they don't need to see very well either. But the most interesting um, two facts that I will tell you about the similarities about the two um, is that our female wombats and our female koalas, they both have a backwards facing pouch. Now, 
I will tell you why. Um, it's very interesting actually because our wombats are burrowing animals. So they're the largest burrowing animal in the world. Um, they'll live in burrows for around, up to around 30 meters long and they'll have all these very intricate tunnels in their burrows as well. So they're always digging, always, always digging. Now, if that pouch was around the normal way, like a kangaroo or a wallaby, all that dirt would get into that pouch and it wouldn't be very good for that joey. So it's around the backwards way so she can keep her joey nice and safe. Now, the other similarity, which is very interesting, I will show you here, I'm just putting it on here. They both have a very interesting bum, a uh, very special bum. Um, so if you can feel here, or you can't feel it, but you can see me scratching Ringo's bum here, it's really, really solid. Uh, they both have a very bony, large plate on their rump, basically. Um, now they both use it for two different things though. So our koalas, they spend all their time up in the tree, so they need to be nice and comfortable up there. Um, so they use their solid bum, kind of like a built-in seat. But our wombats will kind of use it for something very different. They will use their bum as a weapon um, to keep themselves safe. So I'll paint a bit of a picture of how he would use that. So say the wombat is out and about finding some food and he is getting chased by a predator, something like a dingo or a fox. Now what he's going to do is he's going to run really, really fast into his burrow. Um, he can reach speeds at around 40 kilometers an hour. Um, that's really, really fast for something so solid like this. Um, that's around the school zone type of um, speed there. Now what he's going to do is he's going to run into his burrow and block it up with his big bum here. Um, now nothing really can scratch or get into his burrow there because his bum is so, so solid and it's not going to hurt him either. But if that predator is continuing to get, try and get into his burrow, what he'll do then is he'll lay down flat like a pancake and he'll wait for that animal to come into his burrow a bit more. Now what he'll do then very very cool he'll strike up really really fast and he'll squish that animal against his burrow now it's been recorded that they've been, they've found dingo skulls that have been crushed at the base at the entrance of a wombat burrow so very very strong animals and a really really cool way um, to keep himself safe now here you go Ringo I will just talk about well, I'm being on the topic of the wombat's bum. I want to talk about his poo um, because they do have really, really special um, and interesting types of, types of poo. Now, wombats are really, really territorial animals. So what that means is that he doesn't want to live with anyone else. He doesn't want any other wombats in his space either. So. When he marks his territory, he wants that marking to stay. Now the best way that he can mark his territory is to poop. Um, his poo is very, very stinky as well. So it tells other animals um, that that's his area basically. But the really, really cool thing about his poo um, is that unlike a kangaroo poo or a koala poo or something that's kind of circle shaped or oval shaped, a wombat's poo is kind of cube shaped. So it kind of is like, dice that he's pooping. Um, now the reason for this is because he doesn't live on very flat ground at all. So he's a borrowing animal, he's always digging. So he lives in kind of hilly areas. So if he poos right at the top of the hill, because it's cube shaped, it's not going to roll away and roll down the hill. Or if it was something like a kangaroo or a koala, they would just roll all the way down the hill and they wouldn't be able to mark their territory. So really, really cool facts there with our um, wombat. Um, maybe Renee will show a bit more. <laughs> Just a couple of questions we've got coming through, Beck. Yeah. A lot of people are asking what does he like to eat and what is he munching on right now? So wombats are herbivores, so that means they only eat plant matter. Um, so Ringo likes to eat grasses and hay, um, roots from trees and grasses as well. Um, but at the moment he's eating his absolute favourite treat. Um, he's getting some sweet potato and some corn, um, which you can definitely tell he's loving. He's definitely munching. <laughs> Another question we did get coming through was, does he like to play with balls? Does he, 
He absolutely loves to. Um, every day, um, us keepers will give Ringo some enrichment, something like a toy or something different that he can play with. And often we'll, we will give him um, some balls to play with. Um, they might have a bit of his food in the ball so he can get it out of the balls um, and have a bit of play time. And how old do wombats get to? So wombats in captivity, they'll probably get around uh, around 15 years old. Um, however, I have heard of one getting to 30, which is pretty wow, incredible. That's, yeah. Um, but in the wild, it's, it's a little bit less um, because of threats to the wombats. So what th sort of threats would a wombat face? Um, so a lot of, uh, just like I was saying with Ringo's story, um, it is cars. Um, so, so common for something, someone to hit a wombat or just a marsupial um, and they'll just drive away and won't even really think about um, what's in that pouch if it is a female. So the really lucky thing with uh, Ringo here is that somebody did pull over to the side of the road. Um, so what I really recommend if you do unfortunately hit something or if you do see something on the side of the road, if it is safe, please pull over to the side of the road and check if that is a female number one and it might have a joey in its pouch. Um, and what you can do there is you can call your local rescue service or your vet um, and they'll come and rescue that little joey there. Um, because it's really, really important that we do um, do these types of things because we really need to save our species um, and do the best that we can. And the last question I might ask is how heavy is Ringo? How heavy is he? Probably, um, we work, yeah, we weighed him around about a few weeks ago and he was about 30 kilograms. Now, um, that's not even really fully grown. Well, he is fully grown, he's, he's an adult, um, but I've heard of uh, wombats getting a little bit heavier than that. So he's a very big solid boy at 30 kilograms. Brilliant. Well, thanks for all that info on Ringo Beck. I'll zoom in on him munching away on his breakfast once more. But what I will do is I'll come back up and we're going to go over to Keeper Mel over here. And she's got our beautiful yellow footed rock wallabies up here. So would you like to tell us a little bit about these girls in here? Sure. So right in front of us, we have Millie. Then on my left, we have Ella. At the back, we have our beautiful Myrtle. So if you guys were in the wild, you probably wouldn't see these guys up this close because they are quite a shy species. But these girls are a little bit different. They were actually hand raised. So they were part of a very, very important breeding program that actually helped to bring back a very endangered other wallaby species. So keepers here were very lucky to hand raise these girls, um, but it means they think that they're one of us. So they have a very strong hierarchy. Millie here is in top position. Um, she always goes to that front bowl. Ella will always be on the other side and Myrtle at the top because she is unfortunately at the bottom of the ranks. And then of course there's us. So we are also at the very, very bottom. And the way they show um, their hierarchy is through growling or shaking their head, uh, which you might see a little bit. And of course, if you don't get the warning signs, uh, they won't be scared to give us a bit of a bite or a grab. So one of the most common questions I do get is what is the difference between our wallabies and our kangaroos? Um, so the biggest difference is probably their size. So these guys are actually considered to be quite a large wallaby species. I think the largest to be honest. Um, and when your kangaroos, uh, which you met last week, um, you can see were quite a bit bigger. So the biggest difference is their size. Uh, then of course, these guys are a perfect example. Um, they're colouring. So wallabies generally have a lot more colouring. So you can see these guys have their beautiful white stripes, um, lovely brown as well, and of course, their beautiful striped tail. Uh, other differences are their faces. Um, so wallabies have quite a pointy snout, um, whereas your kangaroos have quite a box snout. Uh, as well as that, their environment can be quite different as well. Um, so if Renee zooms around, this is a pretty typical environment um, for these wallabies. It's quite dry, it's quite arid, uh, and it's very, very mountainous and rocky as well. So this is what you would see in the wild with these girls, um, whereas your kangaroos live on big open plains. So of course, they live in different areas, therefore they eat different foods. So these guys would generally eat lots of leaves and branches and bark, and also grasses where available, um, whereas your kangaroos will be on big open grassland, so grazing on all that grassland, um, not as much on branches, which means they're not as good with their hands. You can see here, giving a perfect example, she's very good at grabbing and holding things, uh, whereas your kangaroos are a little bit clumsy with their hands. They're more, they'll more lean down to get their food uh, and they'll graze 
all day. So that means they're eating throughout quite a long period, um, not like us having a meal here and there. Uh, they'll eat throughout the entire day. And the last difference I'll talk about uh, is their teeth. Of course, they eat different things. Therefore, their teeth are gonna be quite different as well. Uh, these guys have more grinding teeth, whereas your kangaroos need to cut through all that grass. So they are a little bit different. Um, so with these guys, Beck talked a little bit about our marsupials. Um, so same thing, these guys give birth to a very, very underdeveloped joey. It has no back legs, it's pink, it has no fur, its eyes are closed, its ears are closed. Uh, and that baby is born after around 30 days. And of course, it has to get to that pouch all by itself. So you can see her doing that head shaking there, just giving Renee the, um, just get, letting her know that she's getting a little bit too close. Um, but now she's settled down. So these girls will give birth to a tiny little joey and it will actually have to make its way to the pouch all by itself. So what the mum might do is lick a small trail from the birth canal up into her pouch just to guide that joey and that baby will use its front paws which are tiny to crawl all the way up into that pouch and there it will latch onto her teat um, and then drink milk until it starts to grow and it's able to come out of the pouch and then of course when it's big enough It'll come up, what we say, at foot, so beside mum, but a little bit different to a lot of animals. These mums will actually hide their little babies in crevices or little nooks in the rocks, go out and find food and water, and then come back because they don't want any nasty predators to get them. So unfortunately, these guys are considered vulnerable in the wild. Um, so they used to actually be hunted for their beautiful, beautiful coat, which is absolutely devastating. Um, but now their main threats are feral animals, so things like cats or foxes or wild dogs, and of course, habitat destruction and competition for food. So they used to be found in quite vast areas throughout Australia. Now they're only found in small pockets in Queensland, New South Wales, and South Australia as well. Alrighty, we've got a few questions coming through. A couple of them are, how old are these girls and how old can they get? These girls, I believe, uh, they're a little bit different. So Ella, I believe, is about five. And then we have Millie, who is four. And I think Myrtle's about the same age as well. And how old can they get? These girls, similar to wombats, will probably get to around that 12, 15 age uh, in captivity. In the wild, obviously, they have all those predators and they have to competition for food. And of course, our bushfires. Um, so they generally will live a little bit less, unfortunately. And roughly how much do these girls weigh? So these girls are very, very lucky. They get three feeds a day and of course they have all the hay they need. So these girls are around 10, 11 kilos. So they get lots of sweet potato as a very, very special treat. And then of course they have hay and lots of branches and um, leaves to eat as well. And they're absolutely adorable, that's for sure. <laughs> so we will leave these girls to munch away on their morning tea. So we've got Myrtle and Ella over there, but we're gonna head back down to Ringo down here. And we're just gonna give him a couple of back scratches because he absolutely adores his scratches. He is very, very spoilt. He's one of the most loved animals here at Wildlife Sydney Zoo in Darling Harbour and we absolutely adore him. So we will finish up this live stream on big old Ringo here, munching away on his corn and getting some absolutely amazing scratches from Keeper back there. But I will just flip the camera back around so we can say goodbye. But that's all from us today. Hi, My name's Renee, we've got Mel. And back over there, we've loved having you, but stick around on our Facebook and you will see a few more of our live streams and of course, lots of activities for those kids that are at home. But thank you so much and I hope you did enjoy. Bye guys.